Sat on the floor. <laughs> I think. I think my. How, how are you doing? How's your legs? Oh Come on. Good evening, everybody. Hey, Good hey evening, everyone. everyone. Pause that. Pause oh, that. Oh, oh, right. Yay! Good evening. Hey. Good evening. Let me just put my microphone in. This is. Uh, I got this <laughs> from on. America. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. This. This is what uh, Michael McIntyre uses. But I've gone for something a little bit more pro. Uh, so. <laughs> Let's um, let's start the show Woo! as we always do with the theme tune. Get the bed Here going, go. Gemma. Good evening, self Come on, I'm going to start. Let's start again. Go. <laughs> Good evening, self isolators Yay! Hello, homeschoolers and everyone else in between. Let's start the theme tune to the shed show number thirteen. Let's go. Hey, 15 on Thursday night, and I grab my drink and I feel alright. We ain't got nowhere else to go, so we're going to the gun to the shed show, shed show, shed show, shed show. Welcome, hey! hello, good little bit and of energy. Quarter of a year anniversary tonight. Quarter of a year. Weeks. We've been doing this madness for a quarter of a year. <laughs> this it does feel it feels longer. Yeah. If I'm being totally honest with you guys, it feels longer. Oh, Good evening, God. everyone. Hey. Uh, is that my Woo. award? It is, Oliver. Yes. Uh, we were hey. we were we've just been sat on the floor because it is raining out there, and in here it feels quite atmos atmospheric, doesn't it, Gemma? <laughs> it's it's lovely. You can hear the rain outside, oh. and we're in here, safe in the shed. Uh, we've been sat on the floor watching you yep. lot join, holding up various items, and none of you noticed. Um, <laughs> just welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to oh. crack straight on. We've got a packed show for you this evening. We've got an absolutely rammed show for you this evening, haven't we? Oh, it's um, absolutely and uh, We want to start off by saying I floated the idea of who you lot are. Now, obviously, you're legends, every single one of you, that goes without saying. <laughs> but someone says, what are you known as? Because this was a stupid idea that's now a quarter of a what? A year? Quarter of a year. Quarter of a year old. This is unbelievable. I have had, I have had, uh, do you know, relationships that had lasted less time than this show. That is quite <laughs> troubling. Um, so I think what we're going to call you, now we've had some suggestions, Jem. We've had the Shedettes. Not bad. Well, I that like sounds that. like a backing group in yeah, the Motown era, like doesn't it? Yeah. We've had shed sen shed sensations, which oh. sounds like a flavour of crisp. Oh, sounds yeah, like yeah, some. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've had uh, Shedders. Now, Shedders, whenever I think of Shedders, Gemma, I think of malting. And... <laughs> And I want to just tell you now, my wife Gemma, she's wonderful, you know Gemma, she's wonderful, but my God, does she molt. Uh, and I'm not being cruel, but sometimes I feel like I'm living with an Afghan hound with alopecia. And that's never a... Honestly, I, I followed her into the bathroom tonight. It's unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? I, it's ever, it's, I, went in, I went in the shower. Don't start it again. I'm sorry. I went in the shower and it's like inside a hairy coconut. It really is. And I said to her, I said, look at this here. It was all over. Big strands of it from her hair, like I hope it's from her hair. Um, and, and she said, uh, I said, look at this. She said, I've only had a shower. I was like, ooh, with Team Wolf. Have you been jet washing Wookies in there? And she'll always leave me a little rosette of hair down the corner. Oh, she'll let, God. She'll do, that's for a competition. I didn't know I'd entered that. And I always get the little rosette and the plug hole. Oh, honestly, there's God. stuff in the plug hole, Gemma. Well, you better get used to it. You live with three women. Oh, like. I, I pull it. It's like a tug of war. I pulled it the other week, right? There's so much stuff. It just keeps coming. The other week it pulled back. Yeah. Either she's had a shower or we've got a dead tramp under our bath waist. I'm, <laughs> I'm checking, I'm checking. So shedders, I'm not sure about. Um, Shedonians. Uh, sounds, a bit e sounds a bit can, e can e I just, Etonian. Can I just offer one up here? Go on. Sheddies. Like, Shed is. Like I'm, I'm coming on to that in That's a minute. Literally. I'm coming on to that. That's a cereal, but I mean, I do feel like I've been locked up till lunch in this tomb. So that's quite, quite appropriate. <laughs> I, I think Shedonians sounds to me a little bit like my fellow blue. We went to, it, we're, we're Shedonians. Don't you? My, my daddy got me my first shed. It's that sort of playing croquet. I'm not sure about that fits with the style. The Sheddingtons. 
things. Oh. Now, what I love about that, it's either a really posh house yeah. that someone's had built and named, or it's like that middle class couple, Gem, you go yeah. and see during the Christmas holidays that your mum and dad like, but you don't. And they say, <laughs> we're going to the Sheddingtons tonight. We can't, David and Susan, pick up the Pictionary. <laughs> we can't wait. Uh, we're bringing the nibbles. The Hamiltons are bringing a trifle. It's uh, sitting in the conservatory playing Scrabble where they're freakishly talented daughter plays <laughs> na you know the violin for you well done Hattie well done Hattie Aww. that's wonderful now do some Nigel Kennedy for us um sheddies I mentioned shedlings that makes me think of you all as tiny little chicks <laughs> under the glow of a warm lamp who just been tiny, not able to just blinking in the light and I'm feeding you a long worm Aww. that's what it feels like. I'm not sure about that my favorite one so far the Benetiers the Benetiers yeah, that's from Lynn Hill. That does sound like a military regiment, but I like that. But I do prefer the term committed, loyal disciples <laughs> who are willing to die for my cause. Because effectively, what I'm trying to say, and I'm going to get rid of this now, because this is, this is a serious point. This is now, what do you say, we've, we've 13 Thirty shows weeks. in, and I think it's, I, I come clean with the guys, it's basically, it's going to be a fully form, fully formed cult, and that's what we're doing. <laughs> uh, that was my plan all along, really, Gem. Uh, you, you conspiracy nutters didn't see that coming, did you? Right? <laughs> it was all, it's just an ego boost for me in a shed, right? We play this show back in reverse, and yeah. listen to my dad playing the ukulele, he just says, kill, kill everyone. That's all it says, <laughs> kill them all, for about eight weeks now, right? And basically, what I'm doing is I'm building a bigger shed behind this one, Gem, yeah. and we're all going to sit in it, like, wait for the spaceship to come. <laughs> Basically, I'm just sipping Cuprinol and waiting for the end of the world, and I'm going to be your leader. Um, but because the thing is, it's always about the leader of the cult, right? And it's always about the leader of the cult. And what makes me laugh is, we've, I've watched programmes on cult leaders, I'm quite into it. Um, <laughs> I'm genuinely serious. We'll all be in dressing gowns by Christmas in here. Um, the leader of the cult, eventually, it always comes down to sex, doesn't it, Jem? <laughs> What are you laughing at? What are you driving at? No, here? no, not here. Oh, no, no, I mean, our idea of sex is... I thought this was a family it show. It is a family show. I mean, my idea of sex now is when I come in and Gemma's got a casserole in the slow cooker. That's the sort of thing. <laughs> and we'll come on to the things that make me aroused. They're on this back wall in a minute. But, oh, yes! But they're, they're the things. But I'm saying, like, in this cult, you normally get the cult leader, Gem. He'll come and he'll be like, day, fi day 50. They've yeah. all settled in. They all yeah. know the roles. And the cult leader will come and say, right, guys, can we have a quick meeting? Right, guys, I was in bed last night, I had a dream, and God came to me and said that I need to sleep with all the women. <laughs> but not, not the old women, just the ones 18 to 20 who were, who were really fit. They're the only ones. I know it's terrible, it's my burden. I'm the conduit for God's words, that's all this is. Um, uh, but yeah, basically, this isn't a cult, this is it. It's simple, if, if you've got a shed, you're in. Ah, uh, yeah. Even if you haven't got a shed, you're in. If you're, yes, you have to have a shed, Gemma. There's got to be a low well, level of commitment. A shed. Well, you're in because you are technically in the shed. Oh, right. You're part of the extended family. Gemma's in the shed. Uh, but what, yeah, so, because the thing is, I think I'm looking for a leader. I'll tell you who the leader could be, right? Go on. Go Our on. eldest daughter. Oh, no, because she's already got a manipulative streak, <laughs> which is quite staggering. I notice what she's doing is she sends her younger sister, Gemma, into battle for her, <laughs> to <laughs> cannon fodder. So if, like, Olivia has been told, She's not allowed on her tablet, not allowed on the computers. She will send Sophia in to face us two and go, can we go on our computer? Gosh, you can't go on. She takes the bullets for her and she'll whisper to her, how evil is that? And that is a streak that I'm proud to say she's inherited from dad. Um, <laughs> Because this is the making, you don't know about this. My brother's 10 years younger than me. I used to take him out. We used to go down to this play area um, and there was like a tree house. Ross was watching. He knows what I'm on about. And what I used to do was, this is evil, right? I used to, my brother used to go up to the top of the tree house. Yeah. And when he wasn't looking, I would run round and go, ah, and then lay on the ground. And he didn't know. He thought I'd oh, thought, and he would come out, and I wouldn't get up until the tears came. That's how cruel it was. <laughs> However, there came a time where, because there's a big age gap, there came a time where he, I couldn't pull it on him anymore. No. And I remember the day he went up to the treehouse, yeah. and I did the same thing. I said, I'll join you in a minute, mate. And I went, ah! And he left me there. He must have been about 25 <laughs> minutes left on the cold, wet floor. And he came over, and he just kicked me like that with his foot. And he went, get off the floor, mate. You're at university next week. That, <laughs> So there is a point where that's oh, going to not be acceptable. Well so, done. so I just want to say good evening, welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to go into some uh, wall of positivity stuff. Yay. Not yet, in a minute. 
I do want to acknowledge this has been an incredible week, right? We've seen some massive historic moments this week. We've seen statues being pulled down of slave traders in Bristol. I'm sure you all saw that. And history is being rewritten in real time, right? It's been fascinating to watch, right? And it's made us ask questions about our past and who we should honour and who we shouldn't honour. It's made our children ask questions and that can only be a good thing, right? I, I've learned more about this Colston fella since his statue was pulled down than when it was up, right? And honestly, I, honestly, if, if I, I've realised, if someone had pulled down a statue of Pythagoras in the 80s, <laughs> right, I would have passed my maths GCSE. I really would, right? <laughs> And I think what we need is obviously something's got to replace these statues, right? There's a big debate at the moment. And I think it needs to be something that can unite the British people together. Oh, yeah. Something we can all get behind that's not controversial, but we can all relate to. And I propose <laughs> a big bronze statue of a Q. <laughs> because we love that shit. Maybe just a, a, long, a long statue like that, Gemma. A broadcasting of people in coats, Gem, with carrier bags in the post office. Just like, just like one bloke tutting like that, looking at his phone. And a, a guy at the back doing that ex expression, Gem, just going like that. Because the woman in front has just asked for a, a, a form that's at the other side of the post office. And then you've got like an old pensioner guy at the front coppering up like that, right? He's coppering up because he's a pensioner, right? And what he's doing, he's retired and he's paying the world back for all the misery it's causing, right? Because that's what pensioners do. They can go to the post office any time of the day. They'll go on the lunch break when it's critical for you to be in and out and just queue up like that for one stamp. I love that. Um, so that would it. I, I tell you the other thing. Um, another thing they could have. Yeah. A Yorkshire tea bag. A oh, big Yorkshire cast tea Yorkshire bag. tea bag. Because like those guys, right? I have never been more proud to be from Yorkshire. They're proper good eggs up there, and it's amazing that Yorkshire tea, <laughs> isn't it? We all love Yorkshire tea. The unique flavour from those rich, deep tea leaves. Obviously, Gemma yeah. harvested in the famous Yorkshire tea fields. <laughs> Off the M62 near Huddersfield, we all know where they are, haven't yeah. we? So sometimes I have two bags in a brew, and that is like that's not builders, that's like excavators' tea, isn't it? It's like I'm not happy until it's stained the enamel on the cup, right? Gemma's dad has 15 brews a day, and I once tried to keep up with him brew for brew. I thought I was going to die. I did. I had palpitations. I couldn't sleep for a week, right? And he wasn't sure about me or dad when he met me. No, honestly, because. I didn't drink tea. Yeah, you weirdo. And he went, I don't like, no, no. He's 18, who doesn't drink tea? He would have been less disappointed if I'd have said I'd got Gemma pregnant. I swear. <laughs> right, and he'd always, he's always leave the, like, what he did, I'd always leave the drink. So he started to make me more smaller and smaller yeah. measures. Until in the end, it was like a shot of tea. It was nothing, right? Yeah. There's a mate of mine, Gemma, yeah. you know, Philip. Yeah. He doesn't drink tea or coffee. I know he right? I said, how does he get through a crisis, Gemma? When it's the <laughs> British way, when things are bad, what do you do, love? You have a brew. You put the kettle on. That's how it's, what's the alternative? My wife and kids have left me. I've lost my job. My life is in tatters. I know, mate, I know. Do you fancy a carton of umbongo? <laughs> you can... <laughs> I've popped the straw in it for you already. Yeah. There you go. It'll be all right now. <laughs> Do you know, Yorkshire tea, tea is better for Yorkshire people, Gemma. It suits us. It's part of who we are. I yeah. think Yorkshire people with coffee, I'm not in And I mean, what I mean is I was in a coffee shop in Leeds once and it was a hipster coffee shop. So really independent, really cool like this yeah. and cool the stuff. And nothing takes the edge of that experience than listen, thinking you're in Italy or somewhere <laughs> and listening to a Yorkshireman walk in and go, all right, pal, two weights and a caramel macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the idea, is it? Um, do you know the other thing I could think you could have on that statue? Very British. A line-up of all the bad meals you've had in restaurants but were too scared to complain about. Do you know, <laughs> just to, that you never sent back. Or someone, Gemma, this is a classic, someone dropping a tray in a cafeteria and a big crowd of people around them going, Way! That's so British. We love that misfortune and clumsiness, right? Do you know what I do think, genuinely, I think what could be brilliant? Go on. These human statue guys in town centres, they yeah. work so hard and it's a bad gig. I mean, I thought my, oh, my job was... I know what you mean. You know, the buskers, you yeah. see them in, in Edinburgh yeah, and they the stand festival. there all day, you throw money and they move. Oh, it's, it's, it looks so tough because they're on the feet all day, man. And I think what we should do is have that plinth on a rotor. Yeah. So we can have, like, in the morning, it's yeah. Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. Right? Lunchtime, Joan of Arc. Yeah. In the afternoon, that bloke dressed as Predator who puts no effort in. How about him? <laughs> um, 
Uh, so that's yeah. my idea for the statues there. Um, thank you. That's a nice little roundup yeah, of the week. Um, I also, before we move on, Gem, I've got a lot to get through because this is um, this is wonderful, right? I think what, what we'll do is we'll dip into the wall, yeah. and yeah. then I've Woo. got I've got something here: medical mishaps from last week. Yeah. With my pen in my ear. This week, the whole of the world has started shoving things inside themselves. Oh, God! Genuinely, I've found four stories in two days. I don't what? know what's happening. What's it's a thing at the people? moment. Shed heads, shed essers. Oh, there's some absolute bangers here. Shed heads are good. An That's Afghan arm with alopecia. Thank you, Leon. That was my joke, that one. Um, so anyway, we're going to go to the wall of motivation, Gemma. The first thing I want to talk about is these. This is Gemma. It's genuinely, we've got a shoe rack. This is amazing. And it's changed our lives, hasn't yeah. it? Look, there you go. That's Gemma's shoe. That is the sort of thing. I walk past that three or four times a day, get a twinge. I honestly get a twinge. Look at the look at look the organization. It's beautiful. It's, be it's beautiful. It's beautiful. She, she has looked at that more than pictures of our own kids. Do you know that? I um, love that picture. And here we've got another. Th this is. It's not just that level of organization. Oh, look at this. This is Gemma's work cupboard where this she stores uh, all her office things. And look at the look at the level of detail they organize it i hate how organized she is look at the plastic boxes <laughs> size order. look at the plastic boxes in size order they're I, labeled as well i hate i hate gordon bennett's there's some cracky names coming in here we'll review them at the end jen right. um, these i don't I'll look at this look at the look organization that is. it's absolutely beautiful she's, a, she's and also we've got one other thing we've been bought oh. from phil and sam newsom we have got a waffle maker oh people. yes oh, oh. That, i didn't think any, any, i didn't think we could go anywhere from the slow cooker Gemma and okay. the bread maker but now we've got the waffle iron and my god it's beautiful look at that <laughs> piece of engineering that is the same reaction you get when you look at an audi it's the audi of battered goods week, oh we're having waffles with everything waffles <laughs> with waffles waffles i'm sleeping on a waffle it's the perfect they pillow so i can eat it in at night and um, there you go so that's the little bit of wall of positivity i'm going to come back to that i'm going to come back to that that's the initial thing we've got there and i also want to mention this rachel mary has sent me this it's a photograph of uh, St. Anthony, who is uh, the patron saint of the internet, she says. And when her mum used to want anything to be good luck, she used to worship that. So I'm touching the patron saint of the internet, probably. <laughs> there you go. Um, so uh, we're going we're gonna to move on. Gemma's on the floor, as usual. Uh, you, you, you keep you informed of the shout outs in a bit, my I sweetheart. Will do. I will um, do. We're going to go from last week's show, um, we're going to go medical mishaps, Gemma. I'm going to update you on this. Oh, Listen to this, yeah. right? So last week, I had the pen stuck in my ear. You yeah, probably remember. Idiot. Yeah. Managed, yep, idiot, thank you. Um, <laughs> managed to pull it out, managed to save the day. However, what I've noticed is this seems to be a thing now. So here, the, listen, just listen to some of these. Go on. Number one, 13 year old boy had 29 magnetic ball bearings removed from his bladder after pushing them up his penis three months ago. Oh, that, God! That is the opener, baby. That's that is horrible. The, I mean, that. He, Gemma, he had ball bearings up his pipe. Oh, and God. the best thing is that was that was that was a busy afternoon, wasn't it? Thirteen-year-old <laughs> sat there in front of CBBC oh. with a dismantled skateboard, just banging it. Oh. Why didn't he stop when he got to twenty-eight? Well, <laughs> when did he stop when he got to? 28? This was his, his parents only discovered three months later when they noticed him walking funny, oh, my and they God. questioned him about it. Yeah, do you know what else I reckon he did? Go I on. reckon he shot their toilet to bits when he went for a piss. Just oh, <laughs> a God. Piss. it was probably like a. Bee Bee gun. The toilet <laughs> it's like it's like a, like a gatling gun down there. Um, <laughs> it, the, the other yeah, Gemma is another one, right? Is it gory? So, a man, grown man, a cable charger, a two metre cable charger up his urethra Why? in his bladder. What Why? are they doing? I mean, I don't. He's, he's probably that lad's granddad. Oh. And the other thing he says, don't ask me where he's put the plug. <laughs> this is the best one. Brace yourself for this one. Uh, on. This this needs a moment. Oh, no. A man had a fish removed from his rectum. Why? After inserting it into his bottom, he said, I sat on it by accident. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't say what species the fish was, but I reckon the boat ended up with a proper red snapper after that. Right? <laughs> He says he's either a clumsy pervert, right, or a really innovative fisherman, right? But oh why is it, God. men, when they have these accidents, why is it that is their awful. pants always fall down first? Oh, why is God. <laughs> my pants fell down and I had yeah. an accident, right? Yeah. Apparently the, the surgeon laughed at him. He said, I'm, you must think I'm an idiot, right? Imagine the fish count and a bloke selling it. Like, do you want me to take the bones out? No, nah, mate, that'll be something to get hold of. Right? Um, <laughs> he didn't say where he did in the chips, Gem, but I think we can all agree this is, this is, on a final note, Gemma. Oh! Oliver Boswell, 
It might have been an arsehole. An arsehole, oh. very good. <laughs> this, that's not the time and the place for puns, <laughs> Oliver. Yes, <laughs> we're working together, we're working together. All I would say, yes. all I would say Woo. on the end of that is, uh, Gemma, yeah. I would say that that is one Nemo you wouldn't be bothered about finding. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, so uh, Gemma, what we're going to do, uh, we are... Uh, what are we up to now? Oh, oh right, right. We've done medical mishaps. Um, what we're going to do, I think, we're going to go into uh, another. I want to talk uh, briefly, right, about. Um, I'm timing you. Are you timing me? Yeah. What? How brief I am? <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Uh, we're going to go into our question of the week. I think oh, we'll go into our. Do we need a jingle. I think we need to go into our question of the week. Right. Yeah, because we, we're uh, we're rocking here. Wait, we need to we need to go into question on. of the week. Oh, go on. it's. Oh, you got... think it get easy? But it's getting harder. What getting is? Up, getting up. No, but you're backed into a. Come on, darling. Right, get some get some pledge on your here knees. Get <laughs> some pledge on your knees. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> question of the week. The oh. question of the week, Gemma, was any of your superstitions, any good, bad, good moments or bad moments. I'm going to yeah. start that again. That was awful. <laughs> um, I can't do links, can I? Any superstitions you have and any moments of misfortune or good luck, right? Yes. That's some absolute belters. I just want to say superstitions wise, obviously I'm quite a superstitious person. With gigs, Gemma, I, if I wear a shirt to a gig and I have a bad gig in that shirt, it goes in the wardrobe mat, civilian clothing only. Yeah. Uh, I never wear it again. I sometimes, before the gig, Gemma, I will, I will recite my words and yeah. what I'm going to say. I sometimes do it in Sainsbury's when I'm not at a gig, workshopping things by the deli aisle near the bagels. You're always talking to yourself. I'm always talking to myself. So much so that once I was in Sainsbury's with my daughter, saying something out loud, and a woman came over and asked if everything was okay. <laughs> Um, so what I tend to do, right, is... Uh, You'll only wear certain shirts. I'll only wear certain shirts and I'll only drink and eat certain foods before a gig. That was in a life way before here when we could all go outside. However, <laughs> many of you have got similar things. Oliver Boswell is yes! a regular viewer of the show. Um, <clears throat> he has got... His, his issues are always toileting related. <laughs> Oliver, ah! Oliver sounds like a 90-year-old man trapped in a young man's body. Because I've yeah. met him, I know who he is now, and he's not an old man. He's quite a young, cool-looking guy. Right. But he's, he seems to be obsessed with toileting. Um, so he can't leave the house without going to the toilet first, right? Yeah. And he say because it basically... I, I appreciate that. What does your nan used to say? Go when you can, not, not when you need to. Which gets more difficult as you get older, because yeah. you get no warning and no choice. You just go when it happens, right? Um, I reckon he's, he, he checks the toilets, Jen, when he's out yeah. anywhere. I think his dream job is that bloke in the services who fills out that chart yeah. to say when they're going to clean again. Yeah. I can see him coming with a big V-shaped mop. Do you know what I mean? I bet in your back pocket now you've got those little air fresheners, Oliver. I reckon you have, mate. Um, chasing one of them up and down all day, mate. Um, here we are, right. Uh, we're going to say, right, I'm going to say I agree with him on that because yes. there's, there's an anxiety when I, I'm, super, I'm not superstitious, but I get nervous in big cities. Yes, because you don't know where you can go. Yeah, when I go to London, all my trip to London is, I don't see any sights. No. My trip to London is just a quest. It's a quest <laughs> for available plug sockets, free Wi-Fi and decent toilets where I can nip in and nip out for a poo without being spotted. That's where, <laughs> honestly... Let me just say now, let me just say, uh, oh, Bella Pasta near the Strand, if you're interested. <laughs> Absolutely. And museums, museums. But the thing is, well, I get, no, Gemma, I feel so guilty when I walk in and I have to, I do this play in my, I do a play, a one-man play. And I walk in, first thing I always do, Gemma, is I always pretend to wave to someone. Oh, stop. I always go, I always go, oh, yep, 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 yeah. yep, when the waitress sees me. Or then I'll, I'll be on my phone to someone who isn't even there. Yes, mate, I can see you. <laughs> yeah. Just order me. I've even done it before. Order me a drink. Yes. Order me. What? I've even done the order. I'll have a lime and soda. I'm in that, my, my gig shirt. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Um, I'll have a lime and soda, right? And I'll, I'm going to the toilet. And I'll go to the toilet. And, and they know. And the thing is, Gemma, I've been so guilty sometimes. I've bought food when I've already eaten. Do you know, just because I want to. Yeah. I've had about six meals a day, but then I'm pulling them out. So there's a natural equilibrium in there. But do you know what you should have? Like my daughter in her school, there's something called a poo pass. There is a pool pass. Yeah, yes. Kids have a pool pass. Kids who are, like, have got issues and they need to go to the toilet mm. can hold up this card, no questions asked, off, off you go, you go. And, off you go and unload, my friends. <laughs> off, drop the kids off in your own time. And I think adults need that. I think yes. you should walk into Starbucks, 
They say, what can I get you? You can't get me anything, mate. <laughs> Poo pass privileges. <laughs> Poo pass privileges. And in you go. Yeah. And they just give you, like, they just wave you in. They give you the code or what. Do you know I went to a Starbucks one? They don't give you a code. They give you, like, a key with a ridiculous we oh, alloy, I hate that. alloy wheel on you the end. You were like, key. mate, can I have a key without an anchor on it? <laughs> dragging it into the toilet. Do you know what I mean? But it's um, to put you off going. It is exactly that. So, um, Rachel Mary, she's got some here, Gemma. Oh, hey, she Rachel. has said she never puts new shoes on a table. That's you. I never do that. My mum right? always said don't do That's that. That's because they have, like, it's when you it's come from, like, people who were buried, they used to lay the body out in their best clothes, right? So you don't put your new shoes on the table. Never walk under a ladder. Yeah. That's, that's another popular one. My dad believed that. Terrible fireman as a result. <laughs> uh, he just stayed in the van. Now, he was a fireman for 25 years, was Roy. I asked him, oh, I had a little bit. <laughs> it's, a, it's that, it's that bit, little beer oh, coming back. God. Um, he asked me, I, and I'm holding a fart in here just for Jenna. Oh, Scott. Um, I'm not going to do it because in a contained space like this, it would kill her and it would strip the chipboard off the walls. Um, <laughs> And my dad, I said, have you got any superstitions, Dad? You do you, and do you know what he said? Go on. Not die. Brilliant. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Not die. That was his superstition. Um, so basically, my dad, he was a fireman for 25 years, and it was fine, but he did used to bring his work home with him, Gemma. How do so, you mean? Well, we'd be sat there watching telly, all relaxed, watching Thundercats, and he'd just walk past and set fire to the curtains. And that was... Uh, <laughs> On your bellies, under the smoke. I don't want it, Dad. I'm scared. Come on. Go to help me cut your mother out this recliner. He cuts it around. He'd be down the banisters. It was a chaos. It was chaos, right? Um, oh. Right. Here we, here we think. But my dad joined the fire brigade at 38, Gemma. Yeah. Uh, quite late. Quite late. I think he was attracted to the excitement, the adrenaline, the pension, job. and a chance to get away from the kids and get really good at snooker, which he, <laughs> he was amazing. Um... Uh, the other thing is, the other superstition I've got, Gemma, Go never do a slide tackle when you're playing football in the park as a kid, because you will guarantee that is a surefire way of finding the dog shit. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, every single time. I always take, here's another weird tradition I've got, weird superstition, I always take a deep breath and close my eyes whenever I'm checking my balance at the cash machine. Because <laughs> there's that moment of dread, you know, it's never going to be good news. Would you like an advice slip? No one wants an advice slip. <laughs> The only advice should be, don't do this. <laughs> don't be here and go away. This is the third time you've been here this evening. You're drunk. You don't need this kebab. Piss off, mate. Uh, and they just, yeah. there, should, there should be a button. I've got this bit, innit? I workshop this yeah, today, right? Very good. I think this is a good bit like this. There should be a button on a cash machine that just says, I am in denial about my financial situation. Yeah. For Christ's sake, give me the money. I don't want any questions. <laughs> Bang! And just a big button, right? Because the cash machine's like a sneering relative. You come up to him, and you, you can see him just going, <laughs> Here again, are we, Mr. Bennett? What is it this time? Another essential purchase, is it? Um, the other ones, people are superstitious about the way they sleep. Yes. There's a lot of people. Yes. There's people who keep the same pillows. Yeah. We know people who keep the same pillows. My yeah. pillow is vile, and I'm quite happy to admit that my pillow looks like someone's been I executed did change your in the pillow. mafia. Gemma just change it, but it's flat. It's got absolutely no quality whatsoever. But I need it. I like it to be flat. And uh, I, I, once uh, she had my pillow, and in the middle of the night, I bowled her over and nicked it back. Yeah. Because I'm not having that, right? And I got. I think we have to. I'm obsessed with sleeping the same way. This annoys Gemma so much. I have to. She has to face east. And I have to face the same way. And if she turns over, I can just feel the breath on me. And it just freaks me out. And we have to sleep the same way. Because it's a memory foam mattress. It remembers well. <laughs> it remembers the formation. That's what I keep saying to her. But the, the way you sleep in bed with your partner does say a lot about your relationship. You know this? Yeah. If you sleep face to face, it means you're intimate and romantic. If you sleep back to back, independent, secure. Mm -hmm. And then, this is the one you've got to watch, which will show you've got yeah. trust issues. Yeah. Which is where she sleeps with your brother. <laughs> Sorry, um, stupid, but that's a joke you can remember for work. I, I throw them in every now and then. Um, Holly Bennett, my- Holly. Uh, yeah, the lovely Holly Bennett, family, family member. She makes, she, this is a brilliant one, this. Her superstition is, she will always try and travel on the M1 yeah. because the service stations are close together and she hasn't got to wait long for a toilet. She's, good, you good. want to give Oliver a lift that's and do a tour of the yes. toilets? That's a, that's a top tip. Yeah. Yeah, I'm loving your toilets. Colour coordinated shoe rack. Thank you. Mary Condo, we should be show. People are really loving your shoe rack. Thank you, everyone. Um, uh, the Gemma, as this is the annoying thing that Gemma has superstitious wise, right? She has visions. 
I do. These I, bloody I visions, man. I cannot help them. I, I, you, but this is what they are. I don't know she's having these visions. So I'll be like, her, her head is playing scenes from Final Destination. It's a cross between <laughs> you've been framed and casualty in her yeah. brain, right? It's worse I, since I've had kids. Yes, it's worse. Because I'll be there. I'll be chopping some salad yeah. with a really sharp knife. And she'll just go... <laughs> <laughs> And I'll be like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm chopping. She's like, no, I said, that is it. I said, I just, I I just had a vision. <laughs> you, you do your vision, bro. No, I do a sharp intake. Stand up. No. I want them to see your vision. Stand up. <laughs> let's recreate this vision. Come on. Come on. Let's see you. Let's see your madness in full light. What is it you do? I'll, I'll just be... I'll, just, I'll be chopping like this. Yeah, I'll see something and I will, in my head... Imagine I, it. Yeah, I imagine what's going to happen, what could happen. So let's hear it. And I'll just go... <gasps> that, that, right, imagine that coming out of nowhere, right? And but I can't control it. You can't I, control no, it. No, I can't. Because what happens is, so she'll say to me, I'll say, what was it? She'll say, I just, I just saw the, the children come in on the skateboard. No. <laughs> the children come in on the skateboard, the knife go through the air and impale them both against the dishwasher. <laughs> and I'm like, mate, the only person that's in trouble now is me because you've made me jump and I've cut my thumb off. Yeah, it is awful. You love I those hate visions. it. And I'll do it for strangers as well. I saw a woman running and I, I just imagined her falling and smacking her face on the. It made me go. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. <laughs> tell you what I'm going to do now, Gemma. Yeah. We are going to read. This is brilliant. Yeah. We've got a fantastic contribution here from Mandy Weatherall. Yeah. Now, Mandy, brilliant. Should be a comedian. I know. She's amazing, right? She'll be in the shed with us, mate. Yeah. Um, you might be <laughs> with cult. Come and join the cult. And uh, Mandy has written in, right, uh, under me asking her to write in. <laughs> because <laughs> she's not written in. I said, can you write in? Um, yeah. um, <laughs> what I was going to say is, right, we've got 104 people watching, by the way. Thank you, guys. Um, Mandy told me, and I've never forgotten it, when she went to see a clairvoyant, Gemma, right. in Ilkeston. Now, that's all you need to know about that. A clairvoyant at a working man's club in Ilkeston. And it sounded like the best night ever. Because obviously clairvoyancy trades off superstitions and misfortune and good luck and all that nonsense, right? And here's a brief summary of the evening. And I just want you to, re I want to read this to you because it made me laugh so much this afternoon, <laughs> right? So this is it. Imagine the scene. Working man's club, Gemma. Yep. It's a woman. I think, what, what should we call her? Superstitious Sandra. Psychic Sandra. Psychic Sandra. Imagine her, Psychic Sandra, shoulder pads, because she's not left the 80s, because that's when she looked good. Right, she's there like that, and she was walking round, and it was a, a back pub room full of women, right, and she walked round, Gemma, she just went, saying random names. Yeah. Mandy was like, it was like a random name, Gemma, right? she said, I've got John. I've got John. I've got John. People, ten women put their hands up, right? She went, because they thought it was their John. And she went, no, I need... More information on John, because obviously you can't work with ten people, can you? You can't read ten people. You can't lie to ten people. So she went, right, um, John, he's sat on a window. He's, he's by a chair with a dog. Five hands remain in the air, right? <laughs> John's telling me he's no longer in pain. And a woman cries. She's got her. She's got her, right? So all the other women just go, it's her John. It's her John, right? So this woman's so gullible, right? And then she goes over to her and she says, uh, John's your husband, isn't she? Isn't it, darling? He's your husband. She goes, no, he's my brother. And she went, I'm sorry, yeah. John told me. John told me at the same time as you, so I couldn't hear you. <laughs> this is, gets better, Jenna. She says, you're so alike, can't you? And the woman's like, she said, oh, thank you. Is it really my brother? She said, yeah. And then she said, Mandy then, she said, she started to call the spirits down like this. Yeah. And she said it was like Vic and Bob with the duff from above <laughs> Come on the spirits, come on the spirits, right? And she says, the spirits are going to join me and they, and I'm going to be their voice, right? And then she says, and then she started going, this sounds like she's going through an Ikea catalogue. She goes, I've got a dresser, a wooden dresser, a wooden dresser with brass handles. It's in the hallway, Gemma, or the kitchen, or the lounge. <laughs> it's like grand designs now, right? It, it's th going through the drawer. I'm in the drawer. There's an envelope. There's a name. Maureen. Margaret. <laughs> no. And this woman went, Mary, yes, Mary. <laughs> and then she says, the clairvoyant, right, Gemma? She was pretending to read a book from the spirits. And this is what she said. She said, yes, Mary, it is you. And I just want to say, will you tidy that drawer? <laughs> That was the whole exchange. The, spirit, the spirits come down oh, to see Mary, Gem. To tell her to tidy and it. And all they could do, tidy that drawer, Mary. <laughs> Of everything they could say. And then she said, when she couldn't read the names on the envelope, right, 
Because she's shouting at the spirits for all coming at once. She went, you're doing it, so they're all coming at once. <laughs> you can't hold spirits in the queue. And she said, we need to sit, uh, sat, sit down because you have to have a rest because it's such a busy night. Yeah. And then she, before she actually got to the dresser, Mandy said she'd tried bedside table, <laughs> dressing table, and then Welsh dresser. And then when the, when the reading wasn't working, this was the best mix. She, oh. went, she just went, no, love, the orb is dimming above you. <laughs> The orb is dimming and moving on. So that's Mandy Weatherall's. How good was that, Gemma? Oh, so, yeah, but that funny, funny, oh, funny do you know stuff. What? I remember Mandy telling us about it. Mm. The way she tells it, Jesus, oh, it's it is amazing, so funny. amazing. Oh, yeah, WTF? Absolutely. Oh. Um, uh, now um, we're going to move on. We have got um, some. <laughs> Do you know what we're going to do now, Gemma? Because we got we, we were racing through time wise. We're oh, all right for God. time, aren't we? We're going to do uh, good luck or bad luck. Um, we have got uh, a story here. We've got quite a few fast ones here. Oh, go on. We've got Holly Bennett, once yeah. again. She was at the zoo when she was a kid. She was in a brand new white hoodie. Uh, they were walking past the monkey cage <laughs> and all her friends shouted, duck. She said, where's the duck? And then the monkey threw a big <laughs> pile of shit at her, which landed perfectly in her hood, uh, which is fantastic. Ma James oh. Robinson, your brother, had a full mirror come down on him when he was a kid. Yes, that is true. He was sat there, this full mirror smashed onto his head, uh, and uh, ba ba bad luck for well, seven, years. seven years. I mean, apparently. he still sat there playing Lego, didn't he? <laughs> To be honest, he was lucky. It wasn't I mean, that's lucky, the ironic thing is. he still had his head attached to his shoulder. Exactly. It could Jesus. have cut him in half. So yeah. I would say falling, a mirror falling on you is actually quite good luck if you survive it. Um, <laughs> my brother, this is the best one, because my brother, yeah. me, and your brother yeah. share one bit of bad luck. What? We always get a hand spasm at the worst possible time. <laughs> now, the hand spasms are quite an amazing thing. Like my, my brother said he's Adam where he's just got a pipe from the bar, Gem, yeah, yeah. and he's just gone, yeah, and, and just, yeah, just yeah. hand spasms. You've done that. At, your brother at, was at the cinema, got his popcorn, Oh God! went I to give the person it. the money and just lost the money into the popcorn. <laughs> so lost all his change into the bottom of the popcorn. Ah. I, we were on a romantic weekend, me and Gemma. Yeah. We were sat there in this lovely lounge with this lovely velvet wallpaper. Must have been a thousand pounds a roll. Sat there with a glass of red wine. And in the middle of the conversation, I just threw it on the wall. That's no other... <laughs> I just, uh, and I just said to her, we're going to have to check out now. We're going to have to... I cannot face this person anymore. Oh, so the hand spasm's a real thing, mate. Um, the the other thing is, I want to tell one quick story on. before we... Oh, God, I've got so much to get through. I'm really enjoying tonight, actually. And I feel like the god of the... Inter oh, uh, we're gonna, don't jinx so it! I'm not jinx it. It's because I didn't use the hairbrush. I told you guys. Um, uh, what I was going to say is, I've got a story here. Yeah. One story from our lives, which started as good fortune and ended in misfortune. Go on. Now, this is basically, I want to tell you a trip we went on to the Sea Life Centre at Scarborough. Now, Gemma will know exactly where I'm going with oh, this. Oh, God. So I we did. went to the Sea Life Centre at Scarborough. This was many years ago, before we had Sophia. There's me, Gemma, Olivia, uh, my mum and dad, and my eldest brother, Ross. He had a hand spasm, <laughs> spack somewhere around the head in the car park. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> and we're waiting to go into the Sea Life. If you've ever been to the Sea Life Centre at Scarborough, don't bother. It's basically just a couple of turds and a wet wipe, isn't it? That <laughs> That's all it is, really. There's, there's nothing to see. Um, so we're waiting to go in. That's right? the sponsorship deal gone. That is. Uh, no one's going to sponsor. I do sheds. I'm all for B&Q. Do you yeah, know what I mean? If yeah. I was doing this in a bath, I'd be, con I'd be concerned. Um, what I was going to say is we're waiting to go in. This guy comes out of the Sea Life Centre. He says, guys, guys, we're finished for the day. It was only like one o'clock. He said, do you want the family ticket? Because you can get in free. That's all they needed to hear. Me and my dad, we were straight on that shit. We were like, yes, mate, we'll have that. What a little bit of good luck that is. And we walked in, walked up to the counter, and the woman on the counter says, can I see your tickets, please? And I handed her this ticket. I goes, there you go, love. We've already been in already. It's fantastic. But we're coming. So good, we're coming again. She looked, and she said, is this your ticket? Now, at that point, I should have backed out. But I thought, you've got to double down, Gemma. Yeah. I said, of course it's our ticket. Why else wouldn't it be our ticket? She says, this ticket is for... You and your wife and two children. <laughs> You've only got one child. Where is your other child? Now, at that point, I should have been rumbled. Gemma, I could feel Gemma getting embarrassed. She's an honest person. My brother stepped in, to, and I thought he was going to admit what we'd done, Gemma. Yeah. Ross stepped in and said the maddest sentence I'd ever heard. <laughs> you know what he's going to say? Yeah. He, he came in and he went, when she said, where's the other child? My brother said, it's gone, love. <laughs> And even I looked at him and went, it's gone. And he went, it was here. 
And now it's not, love. But we're going in. <laughs> like, like we've gone, we've lost a kid. Yeah, we're just, we're, we're fine. We're fine. We'll <laughs> ring the police later because let's go and see them penguins. Do you know what I mean? We'll sort it out after. Oh and like, she just God. went, what do you mean it's gone? And Ross just doubled down. He said, it's not here, love. It's fine. We don't worry about it. We don't worry about it. And then she oh, looked at Gemma because Gemma was cracking. Gemma was in the corner like that. She looked like Kenny from South Park. She had a goo look like that because she was in this corner, weren't you, Gem? You were like a character glitching on a video oh, game, just God. scared witless, that is. Yeah. And uh, she saw Gemma and knew she was a weak link. And she said to Gemma, I'm going to ask you one more time. And I want an honest and truthful answer. Is this your ticket? And Gemma said, I'm afraid it's not, no. And I swear I heard Roy go, grass! I swear he said that. And then she says, right, finally, well, that's £27.50. Here's your wristbands, here's your colouring book, and an activity sheet for your daughter. And I wanted to say to her, Gemma, yeah. we'll need two of those. For when the other kid For when the other kid turns up. <laughs> I, do you know the best thing was? We came outside, right? Oh, we came outside God. and we saw another guy, Gem. Yeah. This time he had... He had two kids again, yeah. and I gave him our ticket with one kid and started the whole thing again. Oh, and I didn't no. watch it, but I would have loved it if him just, yeah. have you been given that ticket? I bet they were doing that <laughs> shit all day. Um, so, uh, oh, oh, what, one God. more thing before I ring my mum and dad, because I want to say there is there is a lovely, um, what should we, should we do? Should we do? The yeah, music? positivity. We've got to get through yeah, that, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, It's Floon, isn't it? Floon, Floon, it's Floon, yeah. Let's do uh, the the wall of positivity, yeah. Gemma. Yeah. Uh, we haven't got a jingle for that. Just <laughs> wall of positivity, um, Gemma. We have got here. Uh, oh. We're going to mention uh, Vicky oh. Ann Minsel. Uh, she has got uh, a Aww. new puppy with Michael Waterhouse, big That's fans so of the show. Cute. I mean, I'm not a dog lover, but look at the way he's looking there. Oh, no. He's looking at you saying, uh, I'm dead cute, but I am going to shit on your couch. Oh, I am, I am going to do one on your couch. That's um, we've also got here. Use this one. This one is uh, Scott and Gemma. It's the wedding anniversary, 10th wedding anniversary. Keith, which is a great name. Oh, Keith. Yeah. Restford Tellers. <laughs> Keith. Um, we've had no quarrels in lockdown. Liars! Um, the <laughs> lockdown man has set in when he shaved off the top of his head and pretended the wind had blown his wig off. And lucky for him, I agreed. The clippers came out and we beaked off the hair. Um, that came a lot of laughing in front of our friends and relatives. Can you wish him happy anniversary for me? Thank you both for a brilliant entertainment on the first now. That's Keith Midgley. And Aww. I think that's Victoria Midgley. Look at him there. He looks Aww, quite good with a bald head. I mean, you didn't have much there before, Keith. Aww. I'll be honest. A, a cat could have licked that off, mate, with an abrasive Leave tongue. Leave him alone. Um, Just because you've got a thick head of Look at this, Keith. Do you oh, remember this right day? Do you remember this, my friend? I'm jealous um, of that uh, Can but, I do this shout-out as well? Oh, yeah. Manky, Manky Beds, who are a great band. They oh. said, crap rehearsal, great gig. Fantastic rehearsal, <laughs> crap gig. I know what you mean there, guys. I know what you... I've had that before. Yeah, I know. I know what they mean. I always think as well, sometimes when you're hungover, you have an amazing gig because yeah. you're on your wits end, but then other times you follow through in your pants and you never get booked again. So it's, it's, it's a fine way. Um, Can we do a shout out? Should, I should be here tonight do it, presenting this in yes. Beeston for Cyrilyn. Yeah, you would have been a, 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 what do you call it, a corporate. Yeah, a it's a corporate, corporate isn't it? Mm. But it was their celebration, their 10 years on today, which is a fantastic, yes, absolutely um, fantastic. fantastic charity. And yeah. I saw Cyrilyn today and she was, well... It yeah. was meant to be such a special celebration. We so can do it. We're going to do it. Tonight. Yes, we are going to do it. We're going to do it sometime. Congratulations, Sarah. Yeah. Um, I think we're, before we ring my mum and dad, uh, that, that's the wall of positivity, everyone. Woo! The wall of positivity. Um, can I just do one quarantine quarrel? Yes. Is Go it on. ours? Yeah. I'm going down. No, you don't play the music. Oh! That's my first quarrel. Okay. Quarantine quarrels, quarantine quarrels, quarantine quarrels. Now, there's a lot of positives coming out of this. Like, Gem has been in here, we've bond we've seen more of each other than we ever have. We're like an old retired couple now. Uh, <laughs> honestly, she's on about getting a caravan, I'm on about getting an allotment. That's where we are. <laughs> she plucked the hairs out of my ears the other yeah! night. And we she should have filmed that. You should have filmed that. It was like Tony. It wasn't t Tony wasn't available, but Gemma did it, and she left them on my shoulder as a little memento for me, didn't you, Gem? And yeah. how many came out? Loads. <laughs> and that's the thing, I'm growing hairs out of every orifice. But what I love is now we're becoming one of those couples, Gem. Yeah. Can I just say? Go on. We're almost one of those couples where Steve writes Sunday love songs where I ring for a dedication to you. <laughs> we're almost a, you know, have you heard those people where it's sickening? They're like, go, oh. here's one, I just, I want to tell my husband Peter um, how much I love him. 30 years together and never a cross word. It's bliss every day. I love you, Peter. Ma, ma, ma. Do you know what? I want a refreshingly honest one, Gemma. I want an honest one. Like, just a, I want to dedicate this to my husband Peter. 
I was always staying with you for the children. Um, now they're grown up, I'm gone. You're a lazy shit, I've never loved you. Uh, and I'm running away with the waiter from our favourite Italian restaurant. Uh, so I would like, I would like, Steve, I would like Fleetwood Mac, go your own way, up yours now, bed. And that would be amazing. You see, that's funny. Oh, can I just do one more? Cool. Oh, my God, this is a mess. Hey, uh, you don't know about this one. Oh, God, right, I don't like this. This is positivity. He doesn't know about this. Oh, it's like, surprise, surprise. This is a picture of flowers he sent me today. Mm. You can be modest. I know. Um, and I just want Sorry. to say, because he said, know. thank you for being so supportive during lockdown because I am a wonderful wife. <laughs> Guilt flowers. So he didn't know mm. I was going to do that tonight, oh. but... Uh, Thanks for printing that off, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for making me look amazing, Gemma. I couldn't find that anywhere, that picture. Uh, uh, I was dying to do that Alan Partridge joke. Thank you, I couldn't, couldn't find it yeah. anywhere. That, uh, if there's any Alan Partridge <coughs> fans in there, name, name the episode. I had to nudge her and say, read that. <laughs> <laughs> it is the thing. Can I just say just one more thing? Right, I'm going to get this off my chest. She is an amazing woman, but uh, uh, like this is the thing. She always gets the names of things wrong, and that annoys me. Last week we what, had like a pavement, pavement blaster. blaster. This week, this this is we were watching the Marvel film Iron Man Two, yeah. and she says, "Oh, look what Robert Down is making there. What's he making? Is it a um, one of those um, <laughs> one of those um, hydro colanders? Oh, what the hell? A hydro colander." What? It's a hedron collider! <laughs> a hydro collider! I didn't know what you were going to say! Um, the other thing, right? Um, oh, God! She, uh, she also, whenever she does the online shop, she puts a <laughs> bottle of champagne as a placeholder <laughs> so that the shop doesn't time out, oh. right? That's bitten us so many times. We've had shops for 390 quid, right? I mean, comes, and imagine, I always think of them packing it at Asda at the other oh, end, going, God. is this some sort of scabby lottery winner? Oh. Because we are packing gem. We, we, is, is he washing down Finder's crispy pancakes <laughs> with an hundred pound bottle of moe? What is he doing, man? Oh. Um, I just want to say, right, uh, what, I think I've got one more thing, right? I just want to say I am lazy and she is amazing because we've got, I've got a chair of doom in the bedroom. Oh, I hate that chair! Because the wardrobe's a big sliding doors. I can't open them at night because the kids are in bed. It wakes everyone up. So I just leave it on the chair and that chair now, I mean, it looks like the alleyway behind Bernardo's. <laughs> There's just stuff stacked up. Oh, and I get, because I am lazy and I know I'm lazy because in the winter, I realised this the other day, yeah. you know when you've got a clear windscreen in the winter, <laughs> You know, like you probably use de icer or you, you know, do a proper job of it. I just clear a small letterbox size section above the steering yeah, wheel. Illegal, basically. And take the chances. Yeah. No, because it's amazing. <laughs> it's like driving your front door, Gemma. Yeah. If, it's like having glaucoma. As yeah. long as any hazards happen in yeah. that small viewfinder, yeah. you're golden. Right, and what's amazing is as the heat is kicking, yeah. it's like a game show. It reveals what you've won. <laughs> yeah. You've got two benches as a wheelie bin. Oh, Fantastic. Um, so. I'm gonna say I know, and I know she not. I know you because she thinks I can't fold. You can't fold. I can't fold. I can't put things away. I can't tie up fruit bags in the supermarket. I just do this weird. That's me. It's me weird hands again. <laughs> and the other one is I, I ruin cling film. Oh, I destroy cling. God. Honestly, I'm going through one roll per sandwich at the oh, moment. God. I don't because we. She's actually stood. A, is she Gemma stood opposite me like a cling film training program. She's got a roll and I've got a roll, and she'll go right. <laughs> listen. You hold your, just hold, you get yours, right, gently, right, after me, after three, you pull it, gen no, you're snatching, you're snatching it, yeah. just gently, and why, are you, why, are you, why are you pulling it from the middle, it's breaking up now, don't roll it back with your hand, you, why can't you get this, why is this beyond you, you useless bellum, so she puts up with a lot, so that's why I got those flowers, because I don't want her to leave me, so, um, <laughs> on that note, let's give a phone call right, to two okay. people who are, Absolutely, who are still together after all these years. They've oh. been they've been social distancing we for a long time, Gemma. <laughs> my dad's sleeping in the shed. My mum's in the house. Uh, can we get a phone call through? Can you to... just check the speakers on, please. The speaker is on, isn't it? Is the light on? Is now. Chicka choo, chicka choo. Let's right, just get go. the speaker. Oh. 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 Hang on. Oh, hang on. Let me just ring again. Sorry. Sorry, Mags. Welcome to the messaging <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, it's gone a bit weird. I'll have to ring again. Hang on. Oh, here we go. Hello. Sorry, Mags. Hello, oh. Mum. So 
Dad, I feel I still feel guilty about that, but you know what? It was worth it for twenty-seven and a half quid, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Are you okay then? Have you got any? You haven't got any superstitions, have you? Um, superstitions. Well, you told me about the time you went out to try, pretend to shoot a flock of birds coming overhead, and uh, one of them shot directly into your eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it was. Um, oh. Uh, yeah, wild, they were geese. Wild oh, geese! God. Shooting that geese! Was, Mum you know, for luck! Geese that... formation. Yeah. So it was just about dusk time, but you could still see them. So I went outside, pretending to shoot one of them. Yeah. Without a gun, obviously, pretending. And one shot in the eye. <laughs> and <you know> over. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love the red shot. Why were you pretending to shoot geese? He was going, Pearl! Well, it's just, just one of those things. Right. Just one of those things you do in Snyder, but not <laughs> <laughs> Pretending to shoot games, that's, that's a day. Have you got a, a song for us this evening, Pops and Max? We have got a song, yes. What have uh, you got? We, uh, we haven't had a lot of practice on this one. Uh, You've been practicing all week, Mum says. <laughs> On different songs, to be fair. All right. Oh. Go on we've, then. Uh, we've on this one. Go for uh, it. We're hoping it's going to go all right. I'm sure it It'll is. Be brilliant. It's been it's been Pardon? great tonight. Right, it's on. It's been there. great tonight. Right, so it's high old silver lining. Yay! Yay! Which is good in a way because there's sort of a good look element to that. Is that? So Anywhere you go, go my baby, I see my son is shy. I don't. Oh, Dad, do you know what? Uh, who wrote the song Superstition? Uh, was it Stevie Wonder? It was. It was. Yes. yes. Gemma was going to ask me. Is, do you know the superstitions he lists in that song? Do I know what? What superstitions he lists in that song? Uh, Apparently he does, I don't know. It's not about going to SeaWorld, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Very superstitious, going to SeaWorld. Make sure you buy a ticket. You're going to look stupid. Nice that. Hey, right, let your dad get crack on. Oh, no, sorry. Come on, crack on, Dad. I'm, I'm holding hey, you up. Ready? Okay, Let's do ready, it. <laughs> Here we go.
They loved it. The feedback bye, is bye. amazing. Bye. The kazoo. Oh, yeah, See you next yeah. week. Bye bye. I love you. How, how about? Oh, well, we need to end. <laughs> Thank you. How about that? Roy and Mags. Roy and Mags, all the way up in Yorkshire, <laughs> drinking Yorkshire tea and playing absolute bangers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of the show. Yay. We've we've had a packed show tonight, Jack. Yeah, There's been so woo. much to do and so much to race through. And we've oh, she's got <laughs> she's got the music on the sex working. <laughs> Oh, I, it, we, we, we were there, we were there. <coughs> Thank you, patron saint of the internet. Yay! Oh, Rachel Mary was Ooh! right. I'm now a believer, baby. I'm a believer. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting the show. Yes. Uh, we are 100 people stuck with us. Yay. Share this show. Share, 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 share. The more you share, the more people watch, the more we're going to keep doing it. We're so good that it's so good you come every week. Thank you so much. Stay safe. If you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Drop us a donation. Doesn't matter if you don't. You being here is enough. Thank you to everyone who contributes. Jen. Thank you to everyone who contributes because without you, I have no content. I ran out of material back in April and now I'm stopping. <laughs> so, we're going back in now to tuck into some toast. I don't know. Uh, we'll have another drink. Stay safe. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week. 8.15 here. Good night. Good night.